Anyway, I just want to talk about the project that we're coming up with in the Philippines that's related to what I do because I'm in logistics and transportation. We, as I mentioned a while ago, it's about building businesses, communities, and lives, and making it happen for the Philippines. We deal with MSMEs, but dealing with MSMEs is not that easy because although 99.5% of our economy is really based on MSMEs. What is MSMEs? Uh, small, yeah. micro, uh, small and medium sized uh, enterprises. These are the MSMEs that we have in the Philippines, in ASEAN region. 99.5% of you know the conglomerates, that's only 0.5%. So most of their economic trade is really based on MSMEs. In fact, now they they have another term other than MSMEs, which is nano. These are the mm -hmm. mga fishball, uh, fishball mm -hmm. suppliers or vendors. These are the small resellers. Nano na ang tawag sa kanila. This is like parang what they call the parang under uh, economy. And then, so, okay, Airspeed is a Filipino owned. As I mentioned a while ago, it's end to end logistics. I started in air freight and I was talking to uh, Kate a while ago because that's the reason why we came up with Airspeed as a name. Because I started in air freight, but we expanded into uh, sea freight, land, Roro, warehousing, international courier, e commerce, and e fulfillment. Uh -huh. Just like fulfillment by Amazon, now in the Philippines, we have fulfillment by airspeed. Wow. As we know, the backbone of the Philippine economy are really the MSMEs. They represent 99.5 and then they contribute about 40% to the country's gross domestic product. So, what is the opportunity right now? The, there are so many pain points of the MSMEs. I was talking to Mina and Lina and you've seen the wonderful scarves that were given out by Mina and Lina. This is difficult to bring to the marketplace. Why? Because by the time it gets there, you have to take the, the bus, and then from there, it will take you four to five hours, then maybe another bus to bring it to the marketplace. Then what about the other areas, like what you mentioned, Tawi-Tawi, Marawi, the barn? Ang hira because by, before they get to bring it to the Philippines and eh, to Manila, sometimes we have to use a carabao to deliver to the mountain because there's really no vehicle that's available to bring them. Number two, our infrastructure is not that easy. In fact, last mile delivery providers, and I'm one of those, have a difficulty delivering to some addresses. Why? Kasi nasa tabi ng sari-sari store na ang pangalan si Juana. <laughs> or doon sa pangatlong poste pagkatapos ng 7-11. And that's how you give addresses. And then when you ask the drivers, oh, saan ba yung uh, address ng kunyari, uh, address ni Mai Mai? Doon. Doon. <laughs> doon. These are pain points, but we would like the MSMEs to have access to market, access to finance, and other tools that we can bring. So we came up with PUDO, which is what we call pick up and drop off. So we consolidate all the shipments, so it will be uh, cheaper because really and truly, transport is so expensive in the Philippines. Within the Philippines, it's even cheaper to bring a shipment Manila to Hong Kong rather than Manila to Davao. Why? History of many, many things. <laughs> so, we collaborate and it's one entrepreneurship. Come up with Pudo Hubs, consolidate, bring the MSMEs to my pets. Then we came up with an SME project, and this is outside airspeed, Pina Speed. We need to come up with a, and USAID is helping us out here as well, with an app where in anybody, like Connie can just text, pick up, or I'll drop off in a particular area. Then we do that. It's cheaper. Then you come up with sustainability because you don't need to pick up from the bundok. Sometimes kasi nasa bundok yan. So it is the it is really 
about multifunctional platform. Access as an empowering tool and Lee, Mina, I have a solution for you because your products now can be on a platform. We can have a marketplace for MSMEs because we have amazing products that need to be showcased worldwide, not only in the Philippines. These are kahangahangang produkto ng Pilipinas. So, how do we do it? Marketplace. Not, e not every MSME can afford to come up with a website. Yes, DTI, DILJ, and all our government agencies are coming up with digital transformation, digital training, and we are part of that. Women Biz is also helping in that. We have to do market expansion, skill resource, capacity building, regional economic development, and most importantly, access to capital. Helping them build up. I was in uh, Seafood City. Yeah. I bought Pamana. And then when I saw it, it's made in Thailand. I said, wait, I'm buying Pamana because I thought it's a Philippine product. And then the owner told me, oh, no capacity from the Philippines, so we have to source it outside. The government has an act that they will purchase Filipino native products for uniforms, for 80 million uh, employees, 1,800 uh, 1, employees. Nobody could supply. So Mina, that's a challenge for you. <laughs> Nobody could supply. Nobody, because we don't have a fabric industry in the Philippines. And this is one of the things that I'd like a humble ask from you. Awareness, help uh, buy Philippine products, and preserve, conserve our Philippine culture. This is part of our culture, our Philippine products. Success for MSMEs, we can make it happen. But, but before I end, I would like to show you a video. That this video, because we came up with a pitch, and uh, this is for, from another company that they have, it's called Amazing Philippine Digital Economy Corporation, and it won the APEC Award during 2024 Resiliency. Makes us proud to be a Philippina. Yeah.